it's through him that we live, move, and have our life. And how we thank God for Jesus. For I am convinced that there is no other name given under the heaven. But I mean, could be saved. I'm further convinced that God raised him up. And gave him a name that is above any other name. And one of these days, at that name, every knee will have to be. And every tongue will have to confess that Jesus Christ, he is Lord. I know we had a commission, but the church is in the And I come to worship and praise him. How we thank God for the angel of this house. Amen. A friend and a brother beloved who will be receiving his honorary. Someone would be Dr. Chibidon. Yeah. 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 I'm just as happy as he is. Yeah. Yeah. Then to the president, thank you, Dr. Turner, yeah. for extending to us the invitation yeah. and for the introduction tonight. Yeah. To the dean. Board of Trustees, faculty, student body, family and friends who come to share with our graduates tonight. And last but not least, the graduating class of 2016. Let's take a moment and thank God for them. When the choir was singing, I've been through a lot. And I had to press my way through. Everybody in the graduating class is standing. And those of us who've been to school and matriculated know why they were standing. Because that served as a testimony that they've been through a lot. And they did press their way, and we're here tonight to celebrate with you. Right. Then we'll thank God tonight for all of the pastors and preachers Amen. in the pulpit and in the pew Amen. for being with us tonight. Amen. And then I am extremely happy to be here because several of uh, native Mississippians are part of this graduating class tonight. And I'm grateful. My former pastor, Pastor James Simmons, of the Kelly Baptist Church, he's graduating tonight. And his wife, Sister Rose Simmons. Amen. And then another young man who passed the church right down the road from where I was reading on the State Line Road, the Tampa Baptist Church, Pastor Don Allen. Amen. Thank God for you all tonight. And there are some of their family and church members from Mississippi. They're all scattered around. And I want all of you to know that I'm proud to be from Mississippi. Yeah. Amen. Some good stuff comes from Mississippi. Yeah. Amen. Y'all just heard one part of the story. Y'all heard about the lynching, but y'all didn't hear about the blessing. <laughs> That's some good stuff. Some good things happen in Mississippi. Amen. I don't want to hold you long tonight, but I'm so excited about being here. I'm in revival this week at the First Dining Church in Winsboro. And when Dr. Turner asked me, I told the pastor, I'll be there four nights. But I won't be there Wednesday night. <laughs> And I made it known to him, you either release me Wednesday night or you get somebody else to do the revival. I'm going to Asia. If the Lord let me live. Amen. Any preacher to get a chance to preach in Asia. 
You don't pass that by. I don't think it's the end of your anniversary. You postpone it to the next Sunday. Amen. You can't preach in Asia. You can't preach anywhere. Amen. And so y'all pray with us and for us that the Lord will use us tonight. I've been wondering, should I be an academician or just a preacher? And since this choir has blessed my heart tonight, I just let the preachers pick up. Open your Bibles, if you will, with me tonight to a very familiar passage of God's Word. And that's in the Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter number 28. Praise our God. Verses 16, and we will conclude with verse number 20. I want to ask that all of you will stand for the reading of the Word of God. I believe that whenever you go to church, regardless of the occasion, you ought to bring a Bible. If it's choir rehearsal, you ought to bring a Bible. You ought, to want, you ought to want to know if what we're singing is part of the scripture. Yeah. Coming to a church meeting, you ought to bring out. Yeah. You want to make sure you get in on what God is blessing. Yeah. Because too many of us are asking God to bless our mess. Yeah. And God is not at liberty to bless what he did not ordain. Yeah. But whatever it is, you ought to bring a Bible when you come to church. Yeah. So if by chance tonight you didn't bring your Bible, but you're standing by someone who did, then look on with them. And if that person who did bring a Bible would not allow you to look on with them, <laughs> remove yourself from them. <laughs> Anyone that selfish and stubborn and stingy, there's a possibility that they could be dangerous. <laughs> Amen. Because I want you to share in the reading tonight because I believe that everyone that comes to worship ought to participate in it. Yeah. And one of the ways that we do that, we do that by the reading of God's word. Matthew chapter 28, verse 16 to verse 20. If you have it, say amen. amen. I want you to read together tonight aloud in unison with some integrity because it is the word of God. So come on, let's read everybody. Verse 16.
That which a person declares and discusses last before death comes is that which is significant to them. And if it's not true in the life of many of those who've gone on before us, it was true in the life of Jesus. In his dying hours on the cross, he's concerned about the soul of mankind. While he hangs on the cross, the first utterance was, Father, forgive me. For they know not what they do. You and I know that deals with salvation. Because when we are born again, we have the forgiveness of all of our sins. And that alone is enough for us to celebrate tonight. The pardoning of our sins. When I was in elementary school, we my mama would always buy a lot of number two pencils. But she always brought more erasers than she did pencils. And I asked her one day, why did you buy so many erasers? She said, because all of the errors that you were made. And I thought that's what forgiveness is. It's the eraser of our sin. When I got in high school, I took every business course that South Pike High School offered because I had desires of being a CPA for many reasons. One of them is that I wanted to own my own business. Another reason is, is because I wanted to wear a suit every day, <laughs> carry a briefcase. Third of all, I never liked to be micromanaged. So while taking all of those courses during high school, I received every year the award for being the best typist or the one who typed the most words a minute. In my sophomore and freshman year, we had manual typewriters. And when we made a mistake, we had a little bottle, black and white, and we unscrewed the top, and there was a little brush called Whitey Eye. That's what forgiveness is. The Lord Whitey Eye. All of our sins. By the time I became a junior in high school, we had matriculated. Yes, yes. The Lord blessed us. I told you some great things happened in Mississippi. We matriculated to the electric typewriter. Yes. And when you made a mistake, you didn't need a pencil with an eraser. You didn't need any whiting out. You just hit one of the keys that spelled delete. That's what forgiveness is. It's the deletion of our sin. I, I just gave you three reasons why you ought to be shouting out. How all the stuff we've done and he erased it, he whited it out, and then he deleted it. I feel like shouting. Because we've all been guilty because all of that sin and come short of the glory of God. But then even in his dying moment, he's concerned about soul. Or he says, Father, it is finished. Which simply suggests to us everything that you sent me to do, that lost man could be found. I've done it. I've done everything because the rest is in your hand. Because you do know that then he utters, it is finished. Yeah. 
Then he talks about into thy hand. I commend my spirit. And you do know that when death shall come and wreck these frames, and our eyes shall roll into the back of our head, and our tongue shall cleave to the roof of our mouth. That's the Mississippi in And we have gone in the dying room to come out the room and lay our head on the dying pillow. That our spirit will go back to God and go. And our body will go back to the dust from which it came. But in the morning, when the great grand master shall wrap the gallery of time that all this world to order, and those who once laid at a dead level will be raised to the perpendicular of the square. And when I see Jesus, it's going to be. Amen. That's not how the story is. Right. The third day morning, God raised him up. Oh, there's an empty tomb there that suggests that he who once lay is no longer here. And that's why you ought to rejoice tonight because he lives. We all can face tomorrow. But I'm trying to prove to you tonight that he was concerned about souls. Even after God raised him up from the dead and before he ascended back to heaven, he's still concerned about salvation of mankind. Yeah. Because at the time of the text, if you would just visit and view the sight, the scenery, and the setting, and even drop on the conversation, it's the evening of his resurrection. Now, I, I, I know, I know we, 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 we say that it was early Sunday morning. When God raised him up and he got up saying, no, he didn't get up saying. <laughs> You've been in school, haven't you? <laughs> so if you're going to preach the word, preach the truth. <laughs> he didn't get up saying all power. <laughs> it was the evening of his resurrection. <laughs> because there's a lot of things happened between him getting up and him declaring. <laughs> Help me if you can. No, don't, don't get mad. It's in your Bible if you haven't torn it out. <laughs> the angels are there where he wants to be laid. The napkin is there where he wants to lay. But he's no longer there. The women goes not to witness a resurrected redeemer, but the women have gone to the tomb anticipating on embalming a dead body. And gets there and discovered that the tomb was empty. Stone had been rolled away. But the angel said, meet it in Galilee. I didn't come to mess with nobody. Just come do what I've been asked to do. Let me set the record straight. A woman was not the first one to carry the gospel. All right, now. That, 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 that wasn't the gospel. It was a message, but it wasn't the gospel. The message is tell my disciples to meet me. But the gospel is he died, was buried, and God raised him up from the dead. That's the gospel. And so don't get it twisted. The Lord was not the first one to carry the gospel. That was just the message. I'm just talking about what I'm talking about. It's, it's, right here, it's right here in the context of the immediate text. Tell my disciples to me. And that evening, that evening when they had gathered, something happened in the text that I, that I really did not pay any attention to until earlier today. It said, and they worshiped him. But some died. And you got to understand that everybody that shows up at the camp meeting doesn't show up for the meeting. So some of you came here tonight. You, you didn't come to, to worship. You didn't come to praise God. You, you just come to show your support. But that's the reason why you all worship and praise God. Because of what they endured. Because of what they encountered. Because of what they experienced. The Lord is giving his holy to Worship brings us in, bring 
bring us into the presence of God. Where it ought to change our attitude toward God. And I don't know how you all feel about it, but I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm frustrated at the pastor. I've been pastoring 33 years, and I've, I've become frustrated. Uh, the pastors, they ask me over what? I, I, because I, I, I should have turned in my preaching license and my ordination certificate because I reduced my calling to a cheerleader. And you have to, you just don't know. How many times in your sermon you beg folk to help you? You beg folk to clap their hands. You beg folk to say amen. Turn to your neighbor and grab their hand. I'm tired of chilling. Tired of developing a pet squad. White House. 
house and just walk past security and walk in the Oval Office and say, I come to see President Obama, but I can't go down on my knees. <laughs>
and worship you. Church where the members and I lift 
to sit at the edge of our seat in great anticipation and say to each other, I wonder what God is going to do up in here today. That's why I'm convinced that the church at its birth was the church at its best. In Acts chapter 1, they received the promise of the power. In Acts chapter 2, they were permeated by the power. Acts chapter 3, they utilized the power. Acts chapter 4, they've been arrested because of the power. Acts chapter 5, 2, 4, died because they lied to the power. Acts chapter 6, chapter 1, because they shared the power. And whenever I would go to some occasion like this and I wanted to be deep, 
I will always call hood and say, hood, I want to have at least one deep thing to say tonight. But I couldn't call my friend today. And so I sat there for four hours driving from Winsboro. And that word go just kept ringing up in my spirit. And I said, I know, I know. And so I looked that word go up. And I wanted to do an etymological study, but I didn't have time. And so then I just decided to do what I used to do. I, I started studying that word. And maybe you want to write this down because I found a profound definition for the word go. And I hope it bless your life like it bless mine. You ready? Yeah. It is. Go mean, don't stay. <laughs>
Now watch me now. But how do we make the disciples on baptizing them? Stop. That's not water. Not in the text. Every time black Baptists read the word baptized, they think about water. But there are two, the Greek word baptizo, it has two meanings. I'm not trying to impress you, I'm just trying to impact. The two means for baptizo, one of them means to emerge in water. That's not what the baptism is in the text. The second definition of baptism is change their identity. If a Greek woman brought a white garment and submerged it in blue dye, when she pulled the white garment out of the blue dye, it is no longer a white garment, it's now what? A blue garment. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a all things are passed away, the whole all things are coming. Can I tell you why folk in our churches was no good when they joined and no good 40 years later? Because most of them never been saved, and those who are saved never been mature. And can I tell you why? Because most of us don't have a ministry that's geared to disciple folk. Oh, <laughs> 
the Bible to see if what they said was true. We validated by the size of the crowd. But you mean to tell me all those people sitting every Sunday and he's not right in dividing the word of truth and you can sit down anywhere in your church? What's wrong? Ain't nothing wrong. And, and pastors and preachers, don't y'all be sad and intimidated because your church is not packed on Sunday. No. The Bible said that the broad road is crowded. But the narrow road. Stop trying to build a crowd and grow a church. But how you grow a church? Teaching. I know y'all like them hollering. I I played with Holly Lee one time before I sat down and I but 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 don't get your caught up that you want some gravy that you slurp yourself today. If you're gonna sustain, you need some meat. And Paul got angry on one occasion and said, you ought to be teaching, but you need to be taught. I came to give you some meat, but you still need some milk. I'm tired of breastfeeding grown folks. And 
here there's an unconditional. Yeah, the conditional before God responds. You must react. Let me give you an example. All of us have heard 2 Chronicles 7, 14. Give my people. When they're called by the name. Here it is. Here's, here's, the, here's, the, here's the condition. Well, how many of them say? Pray. Seek my faith. And turn from their wicked way. Then will I. Hear from heaven. Heal their land. And forgive them of their sin. And that's conditional. But unconditional. The same Jesus. That you see us sin. He's going to be seen in the same like now. You know, you know back in the day in the city, we, we was poor. We, we, did, we didn't have smartphones. And see, your children are dumb with smartphones. Because they're waiting on the smartphone to do everything for them. It'll correct misspelled words for them. It'll add two plus two for them. Because our children can't read, write, not count. Because we gave them gadgets. But see, I'm from Mississippi. We, mama take it, go play, and then buy no toy. But see, some of y'all are not from New Orleans. You just been here so long, you call it New Orleans home. But Osaka is a suburb of New Orleans. Y'all just don't cross the state line. You, you haven't been in the city all your day. Your daddy who ran and went out to set a tire and he wouldn't give them to the guy who sold tires. He said, put them on the back of the truck. Because we're going to wrap a rope around one and make a swing. Get your little brother, put him in one and then make it a car. Come on, somebody. Even you got ready to kill hogs and put the wash pot in that tire to keep the water hot. Come on, somebody. Your mama from around by your bicycle and you didn't have sense enough to take care of it. You tried to show up in front of the neighbor and you speed up and then you hit the brakes and do a it. Walk the rim and couldn't ride the bike, but you didn't throw away the rim. You just got a 16 pin and nail, yell it to a tree, making a basketball game.
Peace. 